and Barry on football. My name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. And my name is Ben Dickerson. Uh, I'm a fantasy geek, but especially fantasy football. And uh, Barry and I have been friends for a really long time, maybe going on 30 years. And over those years, we found how much we really love football. We are crazy football fans. Uh, ben still coaches. Um, I'm a Madden guy. I'm a big Madden fan. You can see some things popping in the background. Madden 20 is out. Um, I've already injured myself playing the game, so <laughs> I'm on. I'm on physically unable to perform. I'm on the pup list for Madden. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the pup list. I'm on That's the pup list for Madden. Uh, it's it's I, I I've been having some really some really uh, fun time with uh, checking out the new game, but Ben, we've had week one, week one of the NFL preseason is in the books. Week two is almost upon us. Let me be clear. I do love football and I do love the NFL, but I take pause. When I think about watching preseason games, it's almost like you have to plan ahead. I got to watch the opening drive or I got to watch at least the first quarter in order to see the players that are that I'm really going to care about, at least on fantasy. Well, that, that brings me back to last week's show that I'll um, mention. And uh, before I even go any further, let me again mention this is the Ben and Barry on football. Uh, please click the subscribe and the notification button. Last week's show, uh, we, we talked about faux football, these preseason games that the, you know, your major players are not playing, the teams are not showing their hand, their playbook hand. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're trying to get some football out of it, but what you're getting is something other than what you're going to see in the regular season. So, uh, we both kind of understand that, but by the same token, you know, this is a ten. This is a time when there's a, some very dramatic people stories. I mean, you got guys that are fighting for their life to get on the squad to realize the dream, the lifetime dream. You know, millionaire status. Um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the contracts that are still being negotiated. There was some big news this week uh, that came out, and we don't know if it's true or not. But we're also then um, going to talk about the games last week. Just quickly go through over, you know, go through them and see if there's anything that, uh, you know, you took out of them. I, I have some information for that. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the upcoming week uh, or weekend of football starting tomorrow, Thursday. There's a slate of games that we'll share quickly with, with everyone. And then we usually have after that a wrap-up rant. I don't know if you have a rant. I haven't really thought about a rant yet. I'm pretty sure I do. Uh-oh. He's got a rant. So let's get ready uh, to go into to this. Um, we, again, you were saying that, you know, you're not that big in, you know, watching preseason. But before we even get to the preseason, I do want to just mention uh, that we'll be sharing this information straight from our Facebook page. Um, which you can find at BNB on football. And wanted to mention this as a, as a news story that hit this week um, that uh, Jay Z and Rock Nation have partnered up with the NFL. Um, he's going to be the live music entertainment strategist. <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. For the entire NFL, that means every stadium? Uh, could be, could be, and the Super Bowl. Okay, I understand the Super Bowl. That's, I'm not really. Well, let, let me say, cool, let me say, this only, this, this officially got announced, I think, today. This is some preliminary information that I was able to, to, to get. Uh, here, so details will follow. However, um, and they will also contribute to the NFL's activism campaign called Inspire Change. Um, this is really funny because it's in 
happens around the same time that the owner of the Miami Dolphins, who also has an ownership in Soul Cycle, is being boycotted by the people at Soul Cycle because he's contributing to the Trump campaign. <laughs> <laughs> this is life in America today. Uh, you know, so it, it just, I just thought that was a, an amazing thing. It, 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 if, tr- if nothing else, it really uh, shows the yin and yang of, <laughs> of life in this universe that we're in and those things that happen almost simultaneously. So uh, as I said, um, when I shared this on one of my other pages, Jay-Z is famously quoted as saying, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, man. <laughs> right. That's right. It's a so, major move for him. Uh, absolutely. 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 A major move. I just thought it was an amazing thing uh, that, that we had there. All right. Let's start to talk a little bit about the games. Kicking it off with Kansas City and the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, you know, the interesting thing here was that Patrick Mahomes actually got a little bit of playing time. Did you get a yeah. chance to see him at all? Different, different teams take different approaches to preseason games, and a lot of it will have to do with, um, you know, youth, um, health, things of that nature when it comes to the first couple of games. Patrick Mahomes uh, is a, just a third-year player. I don't think he's ever had any major injuries. They feel pretty good about putting him out there for maybe a series or two in game one, and maybe he'll play the whole first quarter in game two. Um, whereas a team like Philadelphia Eagles, for instance, although their quarterback is healthy, as far as I know, to the point of being 100%, because he has an injury history, they're probably going to hold him out. They held him out of the first game. They will probably hold him out again. And if they hold him out for game three of the preseason, you're not going to see him until game one of the regular season. He's not going to play at all. I think they're still working on that. They haven't made up their minds exactly what they want to do. Well, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the – the Eagles, they're, they're coming up. Uh, but before we, we get to the Eagles, let's take a quick look at the Bills. They played the Colts. Did you get a chance to take a look at that at all? No, I did not. But did the Bills win the game? The final on that game, what was the final? Where is it at here? 24-16 Buffalo Bills. Right. Okay. Now, I didn't watch the game. I I didn't even remember what the score was. But I assumed that the Bills won the game. Um, And it has nothing to do with Andrew Luck not playing for the Colts because I'm sure um, Josh Allen played very little, if at all, in that first game. But uh, I think the Bills may be a surprise team this year. We'll have to take a look at them. It's a shame they're in the AFC East with the Patriots, but somebody's got to give them some competition. I think the Bills are going to try to step up and do that. You know, um, it's interesting that you say that because – Uh, When I look at the statistics for that game, I see uh, Josh Allen went 6 for 11, 66 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Right. That's like one or two series. Huh? That's one or two series. Yeah. Matt Barkley, who did get some work, uh, went 9 for 14. Dude, you know how long Matt Barkley's been in the league? Well, remember last week I said it's always interesting to see the second string guys who've been around a long time, how they perform against, you know, the, in the preseason against these makeshift made up second string third. You don't know who's out there. And they, but yeah, Matt Barkley, 126, one touchdown, no interceptions. 
could Beth Barkley be ready for prime time? Is it at all possible? Well, <laughs> you know, when you're a backup like that and these guys, some of these guys have some really long careers where they may have actually gotten half, three quarters, or perhaps if they're lucky, a full season under their belts and the rest of their career consists of statistics brought up in the preseason. Basically, they're proven that they're worth keeping around as a backup. They, they show their value. I took them on a drive. I completed most of my passes. I scored. Well, you might, have, you might not have paid much attention to that game. How about this game, Mr. Giants fan? Well, it just so happens that I did watch uh, the first – half, almost the first half of that game. And uh, I was very happy to see that our new quarterback, Mr. Jones, came out, showed off a little bit. Um, he put on a nice drive. Um, he completed all of his passes. He scored a touchdown on a really nice corner, corner route throw. Um, he looked cool. He looked composed. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about him. Of course, it doesn't really mean anything, but as a fan, to me, it means a lot. He could have come out and fallen on his face. He could have had a tough day like Mr. Haskins down in Washington, but he did. So I'm happy, and I'm looking forward to seeing him again real soon this weekend. Um, he, 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 he looked sharp. Yes, he did. The, I liked his, the trajectory. I liked the velocity. The ball looked smooth, but it was moving, uh, coming out of his hands. Um, and I thought that that was, that, that was very good. Uh, a lot of people were pretty much impressed uh, by that. Um, I don't know, you know if, that's gonna, if that's enough yet. It's still early on. Um, Eli is still the man. Uh, so it's no doubt about it, but it wasn't a bad, uh, a bad game. I, I um, enjoyed the game itself. The, the, um, passing you, you had, uh, for the giants, Tanny went 14 for 19, you know, Jones was five for five. Yes. But Lawletta was nine for 12. So, I mean, you guys was, was kind of getting it in no interceptions, you know, not bad. Uh, Trevor Simeon was 13 for 16 for the Jets. Um, Sam Darnold was It's actually five. really good. Yeah. 13 out of 16 is really good. It's really good, yeah. Yeah, he had a rating of 107. Sam Darnold was for four for five with a 158.3 perfect rating. That's so excellent. And a touchdown. He's the starter. It was the first drive. He did everything he was supposed to do. Did the same thing Daniel Jones did. <laughs> Completed all his passes, drove him downfield, and scored a touchdown. Yeah. Enough. That's yeah. all you need to see. <laughs> that was some good stuff. That was some good stuff. All right. Bear with me one second here while I attempt to get this right. All right. There we go. Yes, it was um, – I thought it was a fun game. They, they were really, you know, out there trying to play some football. Did anybody uh, stand out beside uh, Daniel Jones as far as you were concerned? No, not to me. Not enough to make me want to stay and, and watch the rest of the game. I, I saw some highlights, <clears throat> and um, they kind of pointed out a couple of the defensive players because they did lose Landon Collins and, you know, a few other guys. So um, that was a point of interest. Uh, the defense was flying around. They looked inspired. Obviously, when you get to the late third quarter and the fourth quarter, those guys are out there trying to get a job. They're, they're, they're giving everything they got. So hustle was not a problem. Saw plenty of that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's okay to take a look at next, this week coming up. Maybe somebody else will shine. But I'm waiting for game three. When the third game of the preseason comes, then I get to see what all the starters look like or just about every starter. All right, we um, let's see who we have next up here. Ah, Dolphins, Falcons. Falcons are a mystery team. Um, not quite sure, you know, 
but some people think they're a bit of a, a of a sleeper, you know. Matt Schaub is he's got to he's going to have to do something in near term, and he's been around a, a bit now. Uh, he got a little bit of time in. Um, Fitzpatrick got some time in. Um, did you get a chance to see any of that? Um, Mr. Fitzpatrick will probably win the job from uh, the gentleman Rosen that came over from the Cardinals. He's much younger, obviously. He's, they're hoping he's their um, guy in the future to hold things down for them. But right now, as far as I'm hearing in camp, uh, Fitzpatrick is, is killing him. So this week will be a good chance to get a good look at him. Probably he'll pe- play a lot in the second quarter. If he doesn't start the game, I'm sure Fitzpatrick will start the game. Interesting when you look at the stats here, um, Fitzpatrick was two for five for 20 yards. His longest was a 14 yarder. So on one play he got 14 yards out of five attempts on the other four attempts. He got four yards basically. So he was in and out. I didn't get a chance to see much of it. Josh Rosen, uh, 13 for 20. He did have an interception, but he went for 191 yards. Um, so he got some good work in. He got some good work in. You know, I think maybe he's going to get plenty of work. They're giving him every opportunity to win the starting job. From what I'm hearing, he hasn't he hasn't impressed them enough to not start Fitzpatrick. So Fitzpatrick is so off and on. He's played. He's you know played at those extremes in one minute. You know, he's Fitz Magic. And then you, what did you call him? Fitz Tragic? It's tragic. Yeah, it's but you know what? When you watch him, this is the thing. If he comes in as a backup and the starter goes down or he's not playing well, his injury, whatever, as soon as he gets in, it seems like he plays well right away. The players all fall in line behind him right away as far as with his leadership and all. The coaches – have a lot of respect for him in the play call, and they don't hold anything back. I've seen him go on two, three, four-game winning streaks, and then the next game just tank, just totally tank. But he will put wins on the board for you. So, I mean, I I got a lot of respect for the guy. They also had a, a defensive issue last year. We'll see if they've uh, – With the they, Dolphins? No. Uh, Tampa oh. Bay. I'm sorry. Oh, Tampa Bay. Okay. You're talking about he will win games. And, you know, so they, they went a little bit of both ways. But the, he, he would start the turnover, you know, with the turnovers. And once once you start doing that, things can swing. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Real quick. <laughs> real quick on you there. Now, speaking of uh, – Swinging, the, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tennessee Titans, I'm hearing so much from Eagle fans. They're the highest-rated team. Eagles are the highest-rated team on Madden. They've been named the most talented team. You know, the interesting thing, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that on Madden, the Eagles and the Niners are both rated the same. <laughs> I think it's like really? four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Madden, Madden's world is Madden's world. They come up with their own, you know, decisions, um, and everything has to correct the numbers somehow, you know, basically what they feed in and whatever. But long story short, yeah, yeah, um, actually ranked about the same. We're, we're actually ranked with a few teams that are down in that area. So, so from a Madden perspective, that should make you feel really good about – the 49ers, your team, right? Because let's face it. Uh, no, wait a minute. I did say something wrong. I think I said that. The, did I say the they were rated the same? Yeah, you did. Yeah, no. I think the Eagles are two points above us. They're not that far away from oh, Okay, okay. They are, are, they, they are teams? a little bit. And they just came out with, a, a, with an update that I have to double check on. But, but yeah, I think they are a little bit better. They're oh, better. okay. They're not, they're not like – in the 90s where everybody else is in the 80s. Wait, 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 wait. The Eagles 
are the highest rated team overall on Madden. Is that correct? As far as I remember, I'll double check that while we speak. Go ahead. And, and I'm and so I, if if they're the highest rated team, I'm thinking they're 99. So. Oh no no would that no! That be a good don't, assumption. Don't, don't make that no 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 no. On a scale of one to a hundred, they are where they are, and 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 where the players you first of all you know you might have some ninety nine rated players. Very rarely will you have a 99 rated team. Okay. Know? All right. All right. So let me, so, let me you know, look at it. think about it more like they got a grade, you know, they got an okay, 85 so, or they got an 86. So they got, you know what I mean? Okay. Five, okay. Like, okay. So, so when I look at it that way, if we know for sure that the Eagles are the number one rated team in Madden and you're saying the 49ers are only two down from where the Eagles are ranked. Do you know off the top of your head how many teams are in between them? It's it's not a matter so much of in between them. I mean, they you could have a – think about it as a, as a class where everybody took a test, and you could have 25 people that got 85s. So it's not like if, if you got an 85, nobody else could have an 85. Got, okay, and that's fine. That's fine. But you said – 100 in terms of saying this is a – a team that's really good, good, great, whatever, they'll give it okay. a good or very All good. Right. So, so even though we don't know what grade they got, they got a numerical grade, right? If you look them up and you look up their team rating, there's a number there. Is that correct? All right, so I have it here. They're rated 89. The Niners are rated 84. Okay. All right, so that's not as close as you, as you led me to believe. <laughs> Well, yeah, four points off, you know, five points I off. Was, yeah, I was getting ready to get at you, man. But, you know, but like I said, they just upgrade, updated the uh, the thing. We just had uh, a nice Yeah, game. yeah, yeah, I know. They updated everything, my fantasy everything book, is too. Fluid. Everything is fluid. As a matter of fact, it's interesting <laughs> because as you see the rookies now, the rookies, in many cases, the number one thing that they have that's low is their awareness, and that, that holds everybody's numbers down. But as they get to see these guys – They'll increase that, you know, they'll increase that. So Oh, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, during the season, not like it's static, you know, anything like that. Um, so the Eagles uh, took on the Titans. Did you get a chance to take a look at that? No, I did not. Well, Mariota played, Mariota, excuse me, played. Um, Sudfeld came in. Uh, Sudfeld broke his wrist. Right. Um, and so we're already with, as far as the Eagles are concerned, um, uh, in a situation where one, one big boo-boo could end their season, no matter how much they think they're going to be, you know, uh, I mean, they have a, a talented team, but quarterback depth isn't one of their strong suits, especially if Sudfeld's not out now was not his throwing hand. So that's one thing. Um, but the way he fell, you could tell he hasn't had a lot of playing time. You know mm. what I mean? So it just – it was a very awkward, you know, look. And he's tall. So, you know, the it's almost – you know, I think this is – and now this is a the theory. It's something I would think. If you think about rel thing relative to height and weight in the NFL, like their height-weight relativity is different than like the NBA, where you got like really short guys, really tall guys. But – the types of the type of game, the collision sport that it is, sometimes, you know, whereas it is a benefit, let's say, to be tall, um, if you're in the remember classical barish, throw the ball up, we could just out jump most people. He had the height advantage, et cetera, et cetera. By the same token, you present a much bigger target um, when that when that uh, bullet. Is coming in at you, you know what I mean, in terms of that that D back. So you seem to sustain injuries, you know, you know. So, for example, when I used to look at Colin Kaepernick versus Russell Wilson, they kind of emerged at the same time. Colin was much more of a sticky type body type, you know, when he would run and you know he was kind of upright with, and, and things of that nature. Um, and when he would try to throw the ball because of his length, it was much more motion than that, that very efficient motion that Russell Wilson had. You know, Russell Wilson, 
could change directions a little bit better. Um, Kaepernick was very fast, and once he got out on you, he could really get out on you. But Russell Wilson could spin. He was more Fran Tarkenton-like. But when the ball came out, it was a quick baseball, again, that type of motion. I saw that motion um, this weekend a few times. We'll talk about that a little bit. But um, in terms of, you know, the the Eagles game, you had, uh, let's see, in the scoring drive, Nate Sudfeld had a 75-yard uh, pass to uh, M. Michelle. Who's M. Michelle on that on that team? M. Michelle. Yeah, M. M. I. C. L. Five yard pass uh, from him. Tan Tannenhill had a had a touchdown. Go to a, a guy on a twenty three yard pass, a Frisker. So you know they got it in. Especially um, I think. Uh, in the second quarter, the Titans put up 14, and in, and in the fourth quarter, they put up 13. The Eagles got off uh, early with their field goal in the first, uh, touchdown in the second, and then they, that was pretty much it for them. So it was 27-10 at the end of that game. Um, and I don't think Eagle fans – not that this is real indicative because we know once you start, but it is interesting as you see some of what I think are the better teams – can come in with that second string team and still look pretty coordinated, you know? So I don't know if they quite were there in terms of that. Um, let's see who's next on this list. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, here you go. You got, you got the Bears. Where is that here? The Bears and the Panthers. Um. With the Bears and the Panthers, let's see, your quarterbacks coming in, uh, Allen uh, for the Panthers. And Mitchell Trubisky did get a chance to play a little bit for the Bears. Uh, that wound up 23-13 for the Panthers. Um, did you get a chance to take a look at any of that? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I wasn't surprised that Trubisky played. Uh, I think um, the Chicago coaches look at him the same way that the Kansas City coaches look at uh, their guy. So uh, getting a series or two under his belt was probably good considering he's still a youngster. Uh, obviously, there was no reason for the Panthers to play uh, Cam. You know, he's still coming back off the injury, although things seem to be really looking good for him. Cam, Cam, uh, you think uh, – have you seen any reports? I mean, have you seen him throw a ball or anything like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's throwing the ball. He's throwing the ball. He looks good. Um, I am not really able to decipher any big changes – in his throwing motion, although that was part of his rehab, was that they were supposedly uh, going to break down his whole throwing motion and rebuild it. Um, I might just for the fun of it, look up some, some video of him a year or two ago and then something from camp and see if I can see anything. But he looks comfortable. His velocity didn't go anywhere. He's still built like a monster. So I, I'm hoping we see the old Cam back again, M minus some of the rushing yards. He could cut back on that a little bit. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, – what's the running back for, for Chicago? He's going to – he's Which one? Uh, where's he at here? Tyree Cohen? Yes. Oh, okay. Did he, did he, did he play at all? I don't know. If he did, that's great. If he didn't, I'm not surprised. Uh, the guy to look for, uh, in Chicago running back is, uh, Montgomery. And he did play. I remember seeing him. He had a nice move with a little shake and bake at the end of it. Um, I look for him to kind of take over from where uh, uh, Howard that just came over from Chicago over to the Eagles. I look for Montgomery to take over his spot. 
Well, that, that's a good choice. Montgomery, uh, three attempts, 16 yards, averaged 5.3 yards. And a he touchdown. probably only played two series. That's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. But he's, he's already touted as being that guy because Tyreek Cohen is smaller and he's more of a third down back. He's, he's like a Sproles. Let's take one quick break here uh, from the <laughs> from talking about last week's game and mention very quickly a happy birthday to the Green Bay Packers. One hundred years old. <clears throat> yeah. Well, just a happy birthday. I mean, you know. Any, anything that's 100 years old, I mean, that's crazy. The funny thing that I always talk about relative to the NFL is that you have at least two teams that are older than the league. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Bears might be one of them. <laughs> you know, I mean, the league, league is celebrating this 100th birthday, so it looked like the Packers came, came right along at that particular time. Uh, I just and I don't know why this picture of Aaron Rodgers looks like that, but he, he looks like he, he looks like he's a hundred years old. Yeah, like he's about to draw on you from the Wild West or something like that. I think that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, one hundred years, man. Packers, the only publicly traded team. You know, they're the only ones who went that route. Uh, even though I don't think that the stock actually. Um, it has any value like you can't trade it anywhere or anything like that but they did get a chance to play the texans and uh, when i took a quick look at at this one uh sean kaiser uh eight yeah. 13, 102 yards one touchdown no interceptions and webb for the texans he basically played the entire game. He was uh, Davis Webb, J J Webb. Oh, first name. What's his first name? Uh, I don't know. All right, we'll get that. But J Webb, but twenty-five out of forty, two hundred eighty-six yards, one touchdown for the Texans. For the Texans, this guy played the entire game. There's no other passing statistic. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a problem. <laughs> Sean Watson is the starter. They obviously didn't want to play him. So they bring in the second stringer and he plays the entire game. Plays the entire game. The problem could be, have a could be shallow, at shallow at quarterback. Shallow? <laughs> That's a little bit beyond shallow. <laughs> That's empty. <laughs> they, got, they got some work to do. They got some work to do. Um, speaking of some work to do, uh, we talked about this – you know, this, these guys uh, last season and, and this season with the new air raid offense coming into play and whether or not we would see any of it. Uh, but you had your Cardinals and your Chargers. Did you get a chance um, to check any of that out? It seems as if Kyler Murray did get a – no, not seems as if Kyler Murray did get a chance to play, obviously. Um, they have to play him. They had to play him, yeah. Uh, they didn't have to play the quarter. What's his, uh, what's his name for the Chargers? Um, quarterback. Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers. So he, uh, is that Trent Taylor, S E T Trailer, uh, Taylor rather here? Um, let's see what happened. Now I saw. Kyle. No, that's Tyrod. That's Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod, right? Yeah. Right. He's with the one, of, one of the things that surprises me is he. Tyrod Taylor, he body wise and style wise, he doesn't seem to be a Philip Rivers. You understand what I'm saying? Philip is. I understand exactly what you're saying. Man, pocket you guy. Know. It's amazing when you have a second string guy. It's like, is the what's? Are you running the system, or are you just going to pick a guy and then change everything else to go no, around that guy? You got to remember when you are picking players to fit a certain uh, uh, or to, to have a, a certain skill set, especially at quarterback. You can't always draft one. So, and you have to have a competent 
backup. You can search all you want and try to find the guy that closest uh, mirrors Philip Rivers, but you probably won't find them. So at that point, you have to find a competent backup. Every team needs a competent backup, meaning this guy can come in and he can run the plays. He knows all the plays. He can run the system to the best of his physical ability and possibly have you win games. You're not going to get some guy that's been in the league for two years and has the same height, the same weight, the same throw motion as Phillip Rivers and stick him in there because he has no experience and he's going to stink it up. Plus, well, where yeah. is that guy? I think that Philip Rivers is almost the the the, the guys that they're, they're constantly looking for. Tall guy, you know, they like his height and, you know, his size and everything. But they didn't find one that they liked or they would no. have drafted him. Maybe, maybe not. But guess what they did find? Who surfaced? Cardale Jones. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. Hey, he went four for six, 47 yards. So oh, what? 47 yards? Yeah. When did he come in, in the second half? I don't know. I don't know. Were they winning? Uh, well, you know. About that. Who, who won that game? Who won that game? Well, let's see. That game wound up being Chargers 13, Cardinals 17. Oh, are you kidding me? Actually, <laughs> when, one, thing I did, one thing I did get a chance to see was Kyler actually throw the ball. And it's very Mahomes-like. Very Mahomes like in the in the zip. I will agree with you on that. I saw similarities, and and one of the really great similarities that's going to serve him well during the season is he's accurate on the run. Yeah, just like Mahomes is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That they that. can move, and they can throw, and that's going to serve him well because from what I'm hearing, his offensive line is a bit sieve like. So, it's um, yeah, it's still uh, uh, as as it was last year. It hasn't totally improved. Um, I think that they are working on it, but I think they're working on it uh, with rookies, as a matter of fact. Right, right, but right. He looked, I, I liked him. He looked good. I thought he looked pretty good. I thought he looked pretty good. When we're talking about being shallow at quarterback, um, the the uh, Seahawks. I don't believe they're not shallow at quarterback. Uh, they seem like they had guys that could come in and really, you know, play pretty well. Um, and the guy that played, I thought, pretty well that really surprised me was Geno Smith. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Geno fan. Um, however, you know, he didn't look bad. Sometimes, well, he was three for nine. Um, but that's you know, not so good. That's not so good. Uh, Paxton Lynch looked really good. Gino looked okay. <laughs> Paxton Lynch has been around. He's not. He's been a guy that hasn't looked that great. But he was eleven for fifteen, put up a touchdown, hundred nine yards, and I think he got a couple runs where he took off a couple times and was a little. Uh, yeah, he was uh, four attempts for 38 yards with an 18-yard run. And he looked under control, slid when he was supposed to slide, did all the right things in terms of that. So I actually thought that they looked like a team with Paxton Lynch and, and Geno there backing up Russell, that if Russell goes down, they might hold the fort down for a game or two. You know what I mean? Hopefully, maybe, you know, I don't see him necessarily taking them to the Super Bowl or nothing. The facts in this look actually looks very serviceable. Uh, well, uh, I mean, <laughs> Gino's career has been quite lackluster. And, I'm, I, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm not the Gino guy. I, but you know something? I wondered, I wondered if he benefited from the coaching, maybe the change, maybe some maturity. You never know what a guy's going to do when he gets on that certain team and, and moving around once or twice in a career can, can actually turn a guy from a, a constant backup to a serviceable starter. Somebody that can maybe pull a season out for you or something like that. 
Uh, Nick Foles was that kind of guy. Okay, when the Eagles got him, look how lucky they got. So on top of the fact that Paxton Lynch was Paxton Lynch was drafted to be the future of the Denver Broncos. And he never panned out. Never panned out. They got Trevor Simeon. They had uh, 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 what's his face? They had a couple of different guys, Paxton Lynch, and they kept him around. And he never got it done. So maybe this might this might be working a little bit better for him. Again, he's not it can uh, happen. You know, he's not in any stress to start. You know what I mean? He's got Russell there. Um, but uh, it was interesting. I thought that they had uh, two serviceable quarterbacks um, where most teams don't have that level of backup. So right. that, that was a the thing there. Uh, Buccaneers, Steelers, talking about somebody who might benefit from some new coaching – uh, <laughs> you, you, you got, uh, you know, t- the, the new coach at Tampa Bay, Jameis now, you know, he's got the quarterback whisperer whispering in his ear. <laughs> uh, let's see what we have. First of all, it was 30 to 28. Steelers, 30. Buccaneers, 28. Um, Jameis went five for six for 40 yards with a touchdown. That's great. Uh, you have like a box score there in front of you? Uh, somewhat. Tell me, uh, did Godwin play? Chris Godwin? Godwin is what? What's his position? Wide receiver, I'm sorry. He's a, he's a wide receiver. <laughs> well, first of all, look, before I get to that, I'm looking down the list of uh, people who have re- receptions. B. Mitchell. <laughs> Wait, five for five for 32 yards. <laughs> all right, all right. Somebody's trying to make the team. Godwin was two for two, 20 yards, average 10 with a uh, long of 17. So he had one really good 17 yard reception. Okay, that's, uh, that's a sleeper guy for uh, you fantasy guys out there. When it gets tough in the later rounds and you know you need a wide receiver. Godwin, you could do a lot worse than picking Chris Godwin. How about um, – so now, wait a minute. This was Tampa Bay and who? Pittsburgh? Yep. Ah, I know. What did James Washington do? Wide receiver James Washington. James Washington uh, targeted five times, four receptions for 84 yards, 21-yard average with a touchdown. Okay. That's good. That's good. I like to hear that. Yeah. I like to hear that. Antonio Brown leaving. Uh, well, let me say it this way. When Le'Veon left, it was woe is me. James Conner steps in. It's like Le'Veon who? Okay. This year, Antonio Brown is no longer in Pittsburgh. They already got Juju. Now somebody else has to step up. I, if, if Juju can replace anywhere close to uh, Antonio Brown's stats and James Washington can come somewhat close to Juju stats, Pittsburgh is going to be all right. Interesting uh, also for the Steelers, Hodges, Rudolph, and Dobbs at quarterback went all eight, Dobbs. eight for 14 for Hodges, five for eight for Rudolph, and five for eight for Dobbs. That was for 79 yards, 91 yards, and 84, 85 yards. Uh, two touchdowns for Rudolph, one for Hodges. So they might they they might have something to work with coming in if uh, Ben goes down. Ben doesn't get hurt that often though, where he's actually out. He's he'll limp out. He gets hurt, he plays through it. Yeah, he pretty much plays through it for the most part. Um but uh again, servable serviceable situation there. So that wasn't bad at all. Um let's see what we have coming up here. Ah uh, yes. And, you know, I always like to mess with you and call him your boy, uh, Kurt Cousins. <laughs> there was some discussion about Kurt Cousins uh, on the network this morning. A couple different people look at him a couple of ways, a couple different ways, which is like we do. <laughs> so 
that was kind of funny. Yeah, Kirk, Kirk is always good. His name even came up uh, in the um, on Twitter. Somebody said about Dak and the, his pursuit of a contract that if a, that all he has to do is uh, slam down Kirk Cousins' picture on the table. <laughs> uh, he wish it would be that easy. <laughs> Just put that picture right there. The nah. Cowboys ought to get the – they ought to get the – Yeah, and when they see him slam that down, they're going to put the franchise tag on him for the next three years. Oh, yeah, we remember him. Tag him. You know, like that. He might – well, he, he – that franchise tag looks pretty big in the next couple of years. Dude, I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> so – They have to pay you somewhere in the top five at your position. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? Well, you know, I mean, the only, the only thing he, he's not getting out of it necessarily is contract for this year, you know, and he doesn't get the long-term uh, um, contract or, you know, security, but it's not a whole bunch of that anyway. I think that, you know, he's, he's kind of in a win-win situation there. All he has to do is just keep playing, you know. If Kirk if Cutty tag you, you have no choice. Yeah, the Kirk Cousins model for for fran- using a franchise tag to make millions and millions of dollars, not a bad model to make money now. Right. Cousins was four for four, 65 yards and a touchdown. So he came in, looked pretty good early on. <laughs> uh, Mannion was seven for 13. A gentleman named Slaughter, six for seven for 62 yards. Um, so that's three touchdowns. Uh, you know, between them, Teddy Bridgewater. Ah, now, now you're talking. Dan Hill for the Saints basically carried the load between the two of them. Uh, Bridgewater went 14 for 19, 134 yards, one touchdown, 32 yard was his long. He had a, a 110.4 rating. Um, Hill, Taysom, is it? Taysom. Taysom. Went eight for 14 for 80 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he also ran for 45 yards with a, with a 16-yard long run. So Right. I'm, I'm not surprised at that. I was going to say, did he have any rushing? Yeah, you know he yeah. did. You know he did. I mean, he looked up. He didn't see what he wanted to see. He was out. Hey, that's that's the Swiss Army knife, man. That I is can do it all. Army knife. But when we start talking about serviceable backups – uh, Teddy looked pretty serviceable. Uh, I would say so. I, I watched uh, <clears throat> some of those highlights, and uh, I was very happy to see how Teddy looked. And, uh, you know, sometimes they say it takes a certain amount of time to come back from a pretty devastating knee injury and that guys are usually better off, even though they may come back, they're better off that second year after uh, the surgery. And I think he's coming into that now. He's been able to throw the ball, be in camps, be back up, never have to be pressed into service. You know what I mean? So he can get the whole knee thing out of his head. And this is what you get. This is what you get, the Teddy Bridgewater that we all hoped we would have before he got injured. He's got a top-notch brain trust there between Drew, um, you know, at quarterback and, and the coaching staff that he has, you know, access to, and he can sit there and soak up all that he wants to soak up of that offense. Yeah, I, I don't know how many more years Breeze is. I don't know if Breeze is going to try to do a Brady. And, and, you know, That's exactly what he's going to try to do. <laughs> That's exactly what he's doing. You, you can go on YouTube and find Drew Breeze working out. He's not playing. He, he's, he still loves football. And he's going to keep on going. All right, Ben, you ready for some drama? Of course. All right. The drama is coming out of Raiderland. Oh. So you had the Raiders and the Rams. Uh, the interesting thing about the Raiders and the Rams early on was that they have such a history together that Gruden was like, I don't know if I want to play these guys in the preseason, you know, because, like, you can't show anything because they know each other, they, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, they, they do have a, a great connection. Um, did you get a chance to check out any of that? 
that game I did not watch, uh, nor did I catch any um, replay of it. Uh, I, I was wondering what Josh Jacobs did. Um, he really has no competition to speak of for the starting running back role. Um, and I just hope that he can, can get the job done for the Raiders. If he's not able to, that's going to slow them down a bit. Um, their receiving core is not the greatest in the world. They put the double team on AB, although he's shown that he can beat that. Um, Roethlisberger is still with the Steelers. So <laughs> without a running game, it's going to be tough on them. Well, <sighs> did Jacobs play? Did he get some carries? I'm looking here in the rushing, and I don't see anything for him. And I also didn't see him in the did not play list. So I'm not sure what happened with him. We'll have to go mm. back and look at that. Uh, McGlennon and Peterman, uh, quarterback for the Raiders. So Derek Carr did not play. Uh, they were – McGlennon was 17 for 25, 200 yards. Uh, Peterman was 9 for 12. Um, 66 yards plus a touchdown. So, you know, they, that wasn't too bad. Uh, Bortles, on the Rams side, you have an interesting mix of backup. You got uh, uh, Bortles, who went uh, three for eight. Wolford, who went six for eight. And, and B. Allen, who went six for 12. Um, that's an interesting backup. What did Bortles do? He went three for eight for 50 yards. Thanks. <laughs> but if you got a if you got a championship team, that's what I'm saying. If you got a championship team, you know, you, you need. I would think that you would have a very uh, particular decisions on who's going to be your backup because if your starter goes down, you got the team to take you to a Super Bowl. You got to have that backup. Uh. Isn't their head coach touted as some kind of little genius? You may yeah. not be able to find a guy with the exact same skill set as Jared Goff, but you must, you must have a serviceable backup. Blake Bortles is not a serviceable backup. He's not. It, it, it makes you wonder. It, it does make you wonder. And again, um, we kind of looked at some of the different uh, quarterbacks. We'll talk a little bit more about quarterbacks. You're never going to hear about them other two guys ever again. <laughs> one will be on the practice squad and one will be a free agent. And they'll <laughs> hold back Blake Bortles and pay him and keep their fingers crossed that Goff doesn't go down. Because if he does, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, that's what I was saying about the Eagles, as a matter of fact. if if uh, They're in the same boat. They're in the same exact boat. Man. Cody Kessler? Are you serious? Cody Kessler? Come on, man. Let's move on. <laughs> Baltimore Jaguars. Now, Baltimore is a team that I've already said at least – their backups fit the system that they seem to want to run with the starter. I did get a chance to watch McSorley. I kind of liked McSorley um, in this game. You know, he's a he's a, a a player. He's you know, I'm trying to think of the word that I wanted uh, to say about him. But he's he's a player. He he's going to be in there in, in pretty much any game, and he's going to really be giving you uh, a little bit of more than what you thought he could give you. You, you think he's better than Bobby Griffin? You know something? He might be. He might be savvy <laughs> enough right now to come in and challenge Bobby Griffin. I'm I'm looking here. I thought I had all of that information. You know, Griffin's been in the league for like six years now. And? And Mick Sorley has been in the league, oh, uh, none? None. Hey, I understand. And based on that, uh, I can see why RG3 
would be, you know, the, the odds on favorite to, to back, uh, to be the backup there. How no, but you've seen McSorley. Was he impressive in your eyes? Do you think he has a future as yes. an NFL quarterback? Yes. Okay. Especially, so, especially there. Okay. And, then, and especially I, there. I think he can – the same stuff that Lamar Jackson is running, I think he can run that. He's okay. moving up. He's okay. got a nice delivery on the ball. You okay. Know, he's smart. He's going to pick up that offense. You know, and sometimes you just have to be able to execute. You don't have to be a superstar. You know what I mean? If you get well, the ball out quick and efficiently and all of that, it ain't like, you know, you, you got to make the, the big, big, big play, he, I, which I think he might be able to. I kind of like – I like him at, at at Penn State, so I might be a bit biased. And, of course, you know, there's much more that needs to be there. But I did kind of like him. I, I think his skill set is close enough to Lamar Jackson's that that makes him a viable guy to have as a backup there. I believe that he already has some advantages over Bobby Griffin, uh, one of them being health, the other one being age, okay? So he's already got that. So if they play out and basically break even, I'm going with McSorley if something happens to Jackson. I, I agree with you. I think he can handle that job. I think he will thrive in that offense if he has to, as opposed to being picked by another team. Uh, hey, I agree with you 100% on that. Let's move on. Uh, we have the Patriots and the Lions. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Patriot way and uh, how that might work out. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have uh, Detroit Lions, Fails and Savage. Uh, versus Hoyer and Stidham. Uh, fails 5 for 14, Savage 2 for 3. Uh, fails had one TD, Savage had none. Fails went 62 yards, Savage went 40. Uh, uh, Hoyer uh, was 12 for 14, 147. Another one of those uh, seasoned quarterbacks that gets to play in the preseason <laughs> with all the other guys who are just trying to make it. And actually look good, um, but again, he's uh, he's with and uh, you know he's with the Patriots, so his game might be. Well, you know, he's he's been in that system long enough, um, <laughs> so it's just a matter of um, get out there and prove to us that you can start and lead this team if necessary. And he does that every year. This is like his you know recertification <laughs> preseason, man. Time for you to prove to us that you can hold down his job for one more year and we can count on you. And he does that and he does his thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, there, are, there are guys who like feel as if that backup quarterback is beneath them and all of that kind of stuff. But some of these guys make a really nice career. <laughs> And Dude, for years, years, and years and years, they get paid for a while, man, uh, back as a backup, even though they don't get a lot of starting time. I, th I think if you asked every number two quarterback in the league if he wished he could have his own team and be starting, he would say yes. You know, um, you can always hold out hope that you could be the next Jimmy Garoppolo who looked like he was going to be a backup until Brady decided to give it quits and, and, and maybe play till he was like 50. You waiting a long time, man. But when you got your chance, you were, you were supposed to be ready. He was released from that prison. Now he has his own team with San Fran. And for a little while before he got injured, to me, it looked like he was ready to be a starter. Now, Hoying is probably holding on to that. But I doubt it. <laughs> what else you got to hold on to? The paycheck. That's what I'm talking about. No, I, but that's a given. I'm on an NFL team. I'm, I'm the backup. They need me. I'm going to get paid. I can coll keep collecting the paycheck, but guess what? I can't just sit back and say, oh, I love this, because the dude could get hurt. And if he does, I got to come in. And if I stink, I might not be around next year. 
How many years has he been around already? Who, Hoying? Yeah. Hoying's been there since Garoppolo's been gone, at least. No, I'm talking about in the NFL. Hoying's been around for a while. Right. That's my sim- That's simple oh, what I'm saying. These guys, these backup quarterbacks, have some really nice long careers in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. Their longevity, there's, there's no question. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. You know, but, but he, he'd feel better if he was Fitzpatrick. If he had a Fitzpatrick career, he'd feel a whole lot better. These guys come in, they want to compete. They want to play. They want to be number ones. None of them are content to be number twos. They're not content. That's why they keep themselves up, keep their skills up, so that the, I can always be one good hit away from coming in and having people tune, turn in, uh, to, tune in to the highlights and watch me play. You know, um, interestingly now, uh, we have a situation in Washington where that same scenario is playing out. Not so much in, uh, with Cleveland, who played uh, Washington this weekend, but you kind of have that situation in Washington. You know, who's going to be the starter? The, the guys with the experience um, apparently are not impressing that much more than, you know, the, the rookie that, that's coming in. Now, funny thing, I watched one of the NFL breakdowns um, on, on Haskins, and – Although you might question, I mean, he went eight for 14, 117 yards, no touchdown, um, and he had two interceptions. But I think what he showed physically is that, A, he could run a little bit. He, you know, he escaped the pocket a couple times, slid, did that real nice, rolled out, had a few nice passes. I think that his arm looks pretty lively, and so the arm talent should be sufficient. So, yeah, he might be a rookie. He might need some seasoning. Um, but, you know, he, you're looking at the, uh, the rookie versus, again, whereas before you talked about Blake Bortles, now you're talking about Case Keenum. Didn't you one time say they were the same guy? <laughs> Ooh, I said Case Keenum was the same guy as Bortles? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it was somebody else. Somebody else? Okay. Yeah, I think it was somebody else. But I think they're kind of the same guy in that they're that guy who used who was a starter, who just didn't yeah, but, as a starter, and now they're getting their chance as a backup. Yeah, no, Bortles lost games. Okay, there's games that the Jaguars lost because of him. You know that that's that's the difference. Case Keenum has had success in this league. It's been short lived. It's been spotty, but he has had it. Bortles, he maybe shined for like three weeks last year, and then he went right back to the same old and got worse. Throwing picks, bad passes. He's horrible. He's got to go. But he had the one good year that when they played against the Patriots and, you know. Yeah, yeah. And even then, he was. people were saying, oh, the Jaguars, they could go all the way. Ah, oh, their quarterback's not that good. Yeah, so what? The Ravens won without a good quarterback. He was kind of on that trajectory. <laughs> but then the next year, nah. <laughs> nah. He's not even a good game manager. They hate to be called game managers. He's not even that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the final game of the weekend was my beloved 49ers. And... The Dallas Cowboys. Now, statistically, let's take a quick look here and see who did what. Obviously, for the 49ers, Prescott came in, went four for four for 23 yards and went out of seat. No touchdowns. Uh, they brought in uh, White and Rush. Uh, Rush was 16 for 26, 142, no touchdowns. White was 9 for 20, 87 yards uh, with a long of of 20. Uh, The long of the day was with Rush for 33. Um, On on my Niners side, um, Garoppolo did not play. 
uh, Mullins, or Nick Mullins started. He went 11 for 17, uh, one touchdown, looked good at times and looked like Mullins a few times. C.J. Beffert went 17, oh, excuse me, 13 for 17 for 141 and a touchdown. Both him and Mullins had a touchdown. Both of them had interceptions, and it was the kind of interception. Sometimes you don't know in these preseason games if the interception is because you're working with these makeshift groups of people and there are different levels and somebody didn't do exactly what they you know. Exactly. That's why I don't put a lot of credence in the stats. Right, right, right. Uh, but, you know, if you go four for four, you go four for four. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it yeah, is. Yeah, but if you throw two interceptions, you didn't just throw two interceptions. Right. Well, they each threw one. Um, their ratings weren't, weren't too bad. Uh, I did get a chance to, to watch a, a bit of it. Um, and I thought that, you know, my Niners looked, you know, pretty decent. They looked like they, they might be ready to, to play some ball. Uh, they won 17-9. and nine, uh, But they still, you know, the question is always going to be that defense and whether that defense is really going to come together. So The yeah, one thing I can say play. – the one thing I can say about the 49ers uh, in, in respect to the quarterback position is both of their backups have had to come in and get significant playing time. They're both experienced at coming in as a backup and leading the team until the starter is ready to go again. Um, that's a real big plus as far as I'm concerned. At this point, they're simply fighting it out to be – to find out who's going to be number two. Um, from what I've seen, I really like Mullen. I like him a little bit better than I like um, CJ. But CJ had his moments when he was pressed into service. So I'd say you're in a good, good, pretty good shape with those two guys. The, 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 the Niners are um, – going to be a question mark, especially in that division. Do you remember who was my sleeper last year? Uh, do you remember who that was? Sleeper person? Sleeper team. Sleeper team. What did you say, Seahawks? Yes, yes. Okay. Same thing this year. Seahawks is the sleeper team again. Sleeper two years in a row. You can't. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Who's picking the, the Seahawks to win the Super Bowl this year? Okay, tell me this. Were they a sleeper last year? Would you say, oh, they were a sleeper last year? I was right. I said they oh. were a sleeper, and they were. I think they were. Okay, so that means that they were kind of being second-guessed, and when, in your mind, they would play better than expected. Yes. Okay, so now you're telling me people are going to look down on them again after they played better than expected last year? Yes. <laughs> Proceed. Well, who's the who's the who's the class of of the NFC West as far as the team? Supposedly the Rams. Didn't the they go Rams. to the Super Bowl? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. They, 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 that's who everybody expects to come out of the West. Um, their sleeper team is the team that is is going to contend with those guys and could potentially come out of the West. So that's why could I'm, potentially come out of the West? Is yeah. that what you said? Yeah. There's a possibility that the Seattle Seahawks, when you say come out, do you mean like they could win a wild card and then make it to the uh, NFC Championship? Yeah. Do you mean they're going to win the division? Or could, excuse me, could win the division? I think they could win the division. So, okay. Well, then you're looking for a lot out of them. Um, I would consider the 49ers – to be my sleeper in that division. I don't think they have the wherewithal to win the division, but I believe they'll be good enough that if they can get a playoff spot, they can upset somebody. Well, hey, I love hearing that. I think that's fantastic. Uh, the, the thing I think that I liked about um, the Seahawks is, again, what we liked last year. Well, Although the defense, number one, isn't, you know, the, the, the defense that it was, I still think it's a, a, a pretty well-coached, pretty aggressive defense. It's still a pretty good defense. Eh, they don't have all the big main guys anymore, but that's okay. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. They still got that run game. They got a good two-headed to three-headed monster at run game. 
they have Russell, okay? Russell's always going to compete, uh, you know, at a high level. They have Russell. And if Russell gets nicked up a little, you know, I think they got backups who can buy them some time. So, you know, so it's very interesting. I don't know about that. Is that where Paxton Lynch is? Can buy him some time, yes. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. Again, some guys play better in certain systems. He looked pretty comfortable in, in, in the schemes that they were running. It could, you know, happen. It could happen. That around them. So uh, that's why they're my sleeper. It's official. I put okay. it out. Yeah. And I'm picking your team as my uh, sleeper, and let's make that official. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll try to remember this, and as we get down the line, we'll see what happens. See, I always root for your guys. See, you don't really root for my team, but I root for your team as long as they're not playing my team. Are you rooting for my team, or are you just giving me your technical analysis? Both. The difference? Both. I, I rooted for you last year. I'm the one that told you about Marquise Goodwin. You told me about Marquise Goodwin? Absolutely. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, Goodwin. Okay. Oh, man, right. He's my – he is right. my player. He's, a, he's right. my player. But in any event, in any event, you know, as far as rooting, you know, right this year, are you rooting for the Giants? <laughs> or is it backwards? You're going to root for them. But technically, well, you know, what do you think they're going to do? Um. <laughs> I'm going to answer this the way I was trying to get you to answer when I said, what are their expectations? Okay. And uh, as far as myself is concerned, as a New York Giants fan, I believe in order for them to get some kind of respect back in this NFL of ours, that they have to win seven, six or seven games and possibly go 500. I know people will laugh because they think, you know, oh, they got a rookie backup. Yeah, he looked okay in the first preseason game. But, hey, that's preseason. They really think he's not going to have to play this year. They really think that Eli is going to be able to play all season. Well, yeah, he will because Eli never gets hurt. The, the, The thing is, has the offensive line improved enough and can Saquon give me the same, if not more, than he gave me last year? If Eli stays on his feet, they can win ball games, and he can look good. Not great, he can look good. I, I, I don't look at him. He still looks the same as he did the first Super Bowl. He still looks the same. He still acts the same. He still throws the same. He just. He's never been able to escape the pocket. <laughs> well, the one time he threw the, the helmet catch, he, he, he got out. He didn't necessarily escape the pocket. He escaped the clutches of those yeah. around him in the pocket. Right. The way then, I mean, the, the, the guy commentating the game pretty much get, gave up. He was like, and he's, oh, wait, he's still up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, hey, I mean, guy's got the heart of a lion. Let's not forget him when uh, we get on here one day and start discussing who belongs in the Hall of Fame and who doesn't. Okay, okay, okay. Now, again, while you say I don't necessarily root for your team, you know we both root for Saquon, the gift bark. Well, then you root for my team then. When the Giants are playing somebody, you well, should root for them. Well, you should okay. hope that they win instead of texting me, ha-ha, ah, ah, y'all stink, ha ah, ah. I have never texted you that. You cannot find that text. I paraphrase, sorry. <laughs> you paraphrase. All right, Mr. Paraphrase. Hey, look, the see the, the weekend that's coming up, uh, we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time going through each one of those games, but we will talk a little bit about them. Uh let's start with the Eagles. The Eagles are playing the Jaguars. Quick perspective on that. Quick perspective. Uh let's see. Foles will not play. And uh, Carson Wentz will not play. So Sudfeld's hurt. So we'll get a lot of Cody Kessler from the Eagles. And we'll get a lot of whoever is the backup in uh, 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 Jacksonville. Okay. All right. A bunch of guys trying to make the team. Uh, I hope I get a little look at Leonard Fournette. I don't know if he's going to play in this game or they're going to hold him out to the third one. Uh, Oh, I'd also like to get a look at – Miles, Miles Sanders. 
Yeah. Okay. They're looking at him too. Jets Falcons. Hmm. Interesting. Le'Veon probably won't play. Thursday night games. These are all Thursday night games. I'm, let me run them down uh, real quick, and then we can go back over real quick. Eagles, Jaguars, Jets, Falcons, Packers, Ravens, Bengals, Redskins, and Raiders, Cardinals. So, Jets, Falcons. Yeah, Jets, Falcons. I want to get another look at Sam Darnold, who actually had a really good rookie season and looked really good last week, too. Um, he's the real deal. Uh, there's some Giant fans out there kicking themselves, saying, man, if we had just taken Sam Darnold instead of Saquon, Eli would be gone and we'd be rolling. No, you wouldn't be rolling. You'd be right where the Jets are. That's where you would be. But I'm not going to take anything away from Sam Darnold. I love him. I really do. I think he's good, a really good quarterback. Packers, Ravens. Packers, Ravens, ah, yeah, the Ravens are always fun to watch because Lamar is so much fun, you know? Um, I'm hoping that uh, Aaron Jones is going to play this week, the running back for Green Bay. Uh, I kind of like him in fantasy as a, a later round pickup for running back. So uh, he had a little hamstring or something. Hopefully he's okay. All right. Excellent, excellent. Bengals. Redskins. Um, well, there's always that quarterback thing going on with Washington. You know, I think um, they're going to give Haskins another chance to redeem himself from those two picks and see if he can really, really look good uh, in, in that offense. Perhaps they may even have the starters in for a whole couple of series for him and see. It depends on who starts the game. Um, yeah, I'd like to see if McSorley is if he starts to maybe emerge as a, you know getting a little more playing time. He yeah. probably should get some more time. They might even half and half him. If they do, that'll be good for McSorley. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bengals, Redskins. We talked about that. Raiders, Cardinals. Or did we say we didn't really talk about Bengals, Redskins? Did we? Yes, we did. We didn't talk about Bengals. All right, because there's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> Raiders Cardinals. <laughs> well, Kyler Murray, all day. I, I want to see him. I want to see him play. I want to see him grow. Half? Say it again. You think he'll get a full half? Oh, not this soon. Not this soon. Maybe a quarter. Hopefully, they'll give him the whole first quarter. Maybe he'll get two drives out of it. You know, who knows? But um, I can watch him all day. I just want to chart his progress as he goes because he's the starter. There is no competition. He's going to run that thing, and they're going to win and lose on his arm and his arm alone. I just, you know. <laughs> Friday night, we have the Bills and the Panthers. The Bears will come in and visit the New York football giants, and the Dolphins – We'll stay right in Florida and go play the Buccaneers. So that's your Friday night sleep. Bills, Panthers. Bills, Panthers. Uh, Cam probably won't play. McCaffrey might get a couple series. I like to take a look at him. He's another fantasy interest of mine. Um, the Bills. I do want to watch that game. I want to watch the first quarter of that game and see what that Bills defense looks like. They're building something up there. Again, I don't know if anybody's dinged up or they might want to hold him out. And the third game will really show me more. But I want to take a look at that Buffalo defense. Yeah. Bears, Giants. Hey, Giants, I want to see Saquon get his couple carries and get out of there. <laughs> I want to see Daniel Jones continue to look like a real NFL quarterback. Uh, at least put a little pressure on uh, the GM and the owner and let them know that if they really feel the itch, they can go ahead and pull the trigger and put him out there. The Bears, you know, there's people saying the Bears are supposed to go to the Super Bowl. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. I, that this could be I mean, again, they, they, they were a doink, double doink away from, you know, that's right. the playoffs. That's right. Uh, they, they are actually still kind of having a mental breakdown at, at the kicker position. Am I correct about that? 
They were really uh, the Yeah, I think they brought like three guys in and none of them really stood up to the task. That's kind of crazy. Like I saw a lot of missed extra points this past weekend. I didn't go back and uh, you know, oh, there was a team. Yes, there was a team. Guy missed two. One guy missed two. What game was that? Oh, yeah, I, I saw more than what I suspected. I was a little right, surprised. Right, you know, guys, their 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 opportunity was going left and going right. <laughs> Yo, these guys are getting NFL tryouts. They're no joke. That's they getting the collar, man. They got the yips. He's <laughs> <laughs> ready. <to> yips. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we have the Dolphins and the Buccaneers uh, coming in. Uh, Jameis will get a little bit of time, probably not too much in this one either. Uh, and But, again, you've got the quarterback fight there in Miami. Can Josh take this position away from Fitz Magic? That's the question. Personally, I don't think he's got it in him. I really don't. He's really let me down. I, I, I thought he was going to go there with all intentions of winning that job. But from what I'm hearing, Fitzpatrick has got him. I mean, it's night and day between the two of them. It's not too late for him, but. Browns, Colts, Browns, Colts, Browns, Colts. The Browns came out in the, in week one uh, with, in the two minute offense. <laughs> yes. Yes. I loved it. Did you really? Absolutely loved it. The Browns are coming out like they're starting the regular season already. <laughs> they are not playing. <laughs> I can't wait till the third week. and They're going to really go all out. They're going to show us a lot. And just think, it's preseason, so they're really going vanilla. In, in the two minutes, is yeah, everybody go long, right? <laughs> That's know? crazy. Everybody go long. That sounds a little more like what the Cardinals should be doing. Uh, but they, it's funny because the Cardinals actually had a little more of a short game than what you might think with the air raid. Yeah, I think they were kind of trying to keep the pressure off. Remember, yeah, you know, uh, this is first year, so yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're doing smart. their best not to over, overwhelm him. What's what's the problem with Mister Luck? Oh man, you know, they really don't know yet. At least from the last reports that I've heard, they've been calling it a sore calf all this time. And now they're saying, oh, it's something in the ankle, in the ankle. Something like they don't know. They still don't know. Now, I don't know if they just came up with this possible high ankle sprain thing to get people away from talking about the Achilles, but I'm not letting that ride until I hear some official word. This sore calf thing is really bothering me. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Patriots, Titans. Still won't see Brady, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, probably not. Mariota needs time. What, what do you got on that? Well, it's a sad thing that he's in a position where they feel like he needs time, considering he's been hurt the last two seasons and, and missed significant time. Um, here's a guy – with tons and tons of promise and he's shown, you know, some light here and there, but can't seem to stay healthy. I don't know what you do with this guy. You're afraid if you hold him out that he doesn't get used to real game speed until game three or four and you put him out there, you won't don't want something freaky to happen to him. That's that's a tough one, man. Titans are not looking good. How about Chiefs Steelers? And why in the back of my mind somewhere do I see some level of playoff contention between these two teams? I mean, Because you're absolutely right. That's probably what you're going to see in one of the playoff rounds is you're going to see those teams going at each other. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this, this, that, that would be a really – well, it should be a good preseason game because, again – uh, it will be for a little while. For a little while, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I think the Steelers will do more than what people are assuming. And, again, you know, with the Browns coming in. Oh, I think that's what it was. When I said the same rating as my Niners, it was the Browns. That's what it was. 
Yeah. They, they had the same rating? Yes. They had the same rating. I'm going to see what the updated rating is, but the Browns had that same rating as my Niners. I thought okay. that was interesting. All right. Uh, Lions, Texans, anything big there? Won't see much to Sean, I don't think. You think? Uh, nah, I don't think so. Probably not. I think they're going to keep Deshaun out until the third game. Uh, Mr. Hopkins probably won't do much or be out there much. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot to see with the Texans right now. They're kind of a mystery team. So, tough to say, tough to say. Jadavian Clowney's holding out though, right? Today, a problem. I think he's hurt again. Oh, he's he's out with an injury? I think he has another injury. Oh, I thought he had a contract issue. Um, he might have both, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, that's not good. That's not good at all. But uh, did double check. Yes, Browns and Niners both rank, rated 84 on the game. Okay. And the highest rated team is rated what? I think it's the, the Eagles at 89. At 89? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's cool. All right. Cowboys Rams. Here's a potential NFC playoff that's coming up. Now, again, this weekend is a little different in terms of the structure of the games. You've got Thursday night games. You've got Friday night games. The games that we just went over, Browns, Colts, Patriots, Titans, Chiefs, Steelers, Lions, Texans, and Cowboys Rams um, are all Saturday night. They range from 4 o'clock starts the Cowboys Rams will finish up at 10 o'clock. So you got a long evening of football uh, in place on Saturday night. Don't plan on going anywhere. No movies. <laughs> no there must not be any on. big fights on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the NFL cares whether there's a big fight on. It is what it is. They come in with their with their scenario. Well, yeah, I understand that. They can't they can't take over Sundays cuz it's it's still baseball season. But um you know, Saturday night is a night when you don't necessarily get a chance to see uh NFL, so that's that's a big deal. Friday that's night too. Deal. And you said they don't take over Sunday. You, uh, however, this is uh they got two Sunday games this weekend. Yeah, only two. 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock. The Saints and the Chargers and the Seahawks and the Vikings. Okay. So that's, that's cool. That's the, that would be a, norm, a normal slate besides uh, if they had a, set, a Sunday night game. Again, you know, so many games, uh, and you can't put them all on Sunday. You can't dominate Sunday, and it's not really your season yet. TV people aren't going to have that. Well, it should be interesting. Um, again, backup quarterbacks will get an, an opportunity in, in, in all of these cases to really show uh, what, what they can do. Um, two good backups with the Saints, two good backups with the Seahawks, um, two questionable backups for the Chargers. And Vikings, I have to double check. Uh, I forget who they had backing them up. I don't think I really had a, a, a good feel for who they were. <laughs> not. I wouldn't get any kind of feel for anybody just yet. It's still early. Some of these new guys that are fresh off the free agent pile and the the last guy drafted pile and all that, they won't be around for another week or two or in another week or two. So well, we, I wouldn't get too excited. Uh, we actually have a, a, a Monday night game. Oh, okay. 49ers, Broncos. That's a good game. That should be a fun game. Yeah, that should be a fun game. You'll, we'll get a chance to see Drew Locke. Uh, Nick Mullins, go at it, C.J. Beathard, um, maybe uh, uh, um, Garoppolo will get a little bit of time very quickly, you know. Mm, I don't know. You don't think so? I, I wouldn't. Okay. What about for the Broncos? Are they down? He, their quarterback is new. This is his first year with the team. Uh, yeah, but eh. – I don't know. I don't know how to call that one. You know how to call that one? First year with the team, I would think that they want to get him out there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, you got this highly uh, recruited or drafted rookie, you know, that you definitely want to get some time in. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The starter, if the starter plays, it won't be long. Yeah. It won't be long. 
Yeah. The third game is the one you really, really want to watch. Okay. That's the right. one where it's almost all stars and they will stay in for into the second quarter or maybe the entire first half. Well, also, we'll keep an eye out because we know they, they went into the uh, preseason with, what, a 90-man roster? Right. You got to get it down to 53 by week four? Somewhere around week four, and they will probably start the cutting process by, by game three. So this oh, that's already started. Uh, they, they whacked a few guys last week. Did they already? Yeah. The, the chopping, the bloodletting in the street is starting. Um, I actually watched a little bit of a special that the uh, NFL has um, called Undrafted. And that's these, the, all, these are all of those guys. One guy was, was super small and he was like, oh, you know, trying to get, you know, some love, you know, at my size. I think he was 5'6". And then the wow. other guy was 400 pounds. And he was trying to play tight end. What? Yeah, undrafted. He's four hundred. He's trying. He's trying did somebody to, pick him up? Huh? Did somebody pick him up? Uh, I only saw the very beginning of the of, of the show, um, and I didn't get a chance to watch the whole series yet. But uh, I did see him. They they had the highlight of him catching the four hundred pound uh, young man catching a touchdown in college. So I, I thought he was a tackle. When it was I think tackle. I heard about this guy. Yeah, I, I thought he was I heard about this guy. And that's what it looked like. It looked like one of the Patriots. You know, the Patriots would make a tackle eligible, and you know, yeah, gets all confused down by the goal line and don't cover him. That's what I thought he was, but I think he actually was playing tight end. No, I, if if this is the guy I'm thinking of, he actually played tight end. He actually played tight end at 400 pounds. Yeah. So. That's that's an interesting thing right there. All right, sir. We are just about done for this particular little uh, for this show. Uh, we've looked at preseason one. Uh, we've looked at the upcoming preseason slate of games for week two in the NFL. And um, if you have anything else, now would be the time to go with it. Um, I was thinking about going on a rant about uh, Antonio Brown, but really I'm so tired of hearing about it that I don't have the strength to talk about it either. So, um, you know, th this whole helmet thing, I can, you know why I don't want to rant on it? Because I could kind of, I could, as, a, as having been a player, I can kind of feel it, you know? He found a helmet that he really liked, used it for many, many years. And he claims that when he puts the other helmet on, it cuts off his peripheral vision. It doesn't fit his head right. It's supposed to be lighter, but that throws him off with his route running. I mean, considering he's probably the most precise route runner in the NFL, for him to say that, you can't scoff at it. You know what I'm saying? He actually has like a little argument. The problem is, I'm sure other people don't really care for it either. But it's been mandated, so they're going to wear the darn thing and get used to it. You know? Goes in the, in the, in the Cairo uh, therapy thing without the proper attire, which is totally his fault. And well, his feet up. maybe it is his fault. However, from what I understand... Uh, they're withholding comments because of potential legal action. I don't think his attorney agrees with you that it was his fault. Okay. So we'll All see right. how that plays out. All right. I, I, I know this. If they have a chirotherapy type of machine, they have somebody there that's an expert on it and knows how to run the darn thing. It's not sitting in the corner of the locker room with a welcome sign on it saying, come on in. It gets cold real fast, and then you can get out, you know? Something went wrong. Tell me quickly, with the cryotherapy, why you would want to do that as a football player in the preseason before you've actually even played any games. I kind of think I would think of it in terms of an ice bath, maybe the ultimate ice bath, if you were in a situation. Look at it that way, yes. 
where if you're in a situation you're playing games and you need to recover and recoup real fast. Yes. But he hadn't really done anything much with the team. Uh, you know? It doesn't matter. These guys have been he's been working out probably he probably took a month or two off after the season ended and then started working out. Guy works out, he works hard. A lot of them do. I watched did you watch Last Chance You? Not 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 recently. Okay, those guys were in the, in the ice tub like after every practice. So chirotherapy is more efficient and faster than sitting in ice tubs spilling water all over the place. That was after a practice. Yes, after practice. Okay, so you're saying you think that, that his individual workouts might actually equal – Relative to the need to recover. Yeah, he's not working hard in practice. He's <laughs> doing nothing in practice. He he's working hard by himself than he is in practice. Yeah, okay. he's sore from working out on his own. Okay. All right. Well, I understand that he worked. You know, everybody talks about, this, you know, his workouts are supposedly legendary. I mean, I, I saw yeah. him with bricks, you know, the guy yeah. behind the guy dropping bricks. He's reaching back and grabbing them and all of that kind of stuff. Right, 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 right. Um, I just didn't think it would take it would it would it went to the level of needing cryotherapy to recoup from those those uh, workouts so you might know go ahead yeah but anyway I could care less I don't <laughs> think he's gonna have a great season uh no? fantasy wise no I, he's not nowhere near the top of my list when I think about fantasy football as a wide receiver there I have several people I would rate higher and draft before him. Um, again, uh, Roethlisberger is still in Pittsburgh. He didn't go out there with him, okay? And he can show you all the video of him going over uh, Derek Carr's house and eating dinner with him and taking his kids to the playground or whatever. But that's not going to be the kind of connection that he just left. Plus, he's going to get double constantly. And although he's good enough to beat the double team from time to time, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough on him. They don't have anybody else. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we, that, that will be seen. All right, Betty. Um, covered a lot of ground today. We're about ready to sign off. Any last words? Uh, no, not really. I don't have any last words. I'll just say go Knowles. Fantastic. Again, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. We generally uh, record and put something out about once a week, and we're getting ready to go into the, the real season, the regular season, where you'll also get a chance. We'll be utilizing the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings at that particular time. Uh, ben and Barry on football signing off. Thank you.